सिक्स पी एम पाकिस्तान स्टैंडर्ड टाइम असलाकुम दिस इज रेडियो पाकिस्तान द न्यूज रेड बाय सुमेरा कावल द हेडलाइंस फर्स्ट प्राइम मिनिस्टर हैज एक्सप्रेस टू रिजॉल्व टू फुली इंप्लीमेंट द प्रोटेक्शन ऑफ जर्नलिस्ट एंड मीडिया प्रोफेशनल एक्ट टू इंश्योर फ्री मीडिया इन द कंट्री Minister for Planning and Development says the next general elections will be held in October next year on the basis of data compiled through seventh population and housing consensus. President reiterates Pakistan's firm resolve to successfully complete projects being carried out under China-Pakistan Economic Corridor. On the completion of the three decades marking the demolition of historic Babri Mosque in Ayodhya city by Hindu zealots, Pakistan has urged India to ensure safety, security and protection of minorities, particularly Muslims and their places of worship. In Afghanistan, seven people were killed in a roadside bomb blast in Balkh province today. In pre-quarter final round of FIFA World Cup in Qatar, Morocco will face Spain while Portugal will play against Switzerland today. And now the news in details. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has expressed the resolve to fully implement the Protection of Journalists and Media Professionals Act. In a tweet today regarding his address at an event organized by Is- Islamabad Journalists Safety Forum, the Prime Minister said in Asia, Pakistan has performed very well on the UN Plan of Action on the Safety of Journalists. Prime Minister Mohammad Shehbaz Sharif has reaffirmed the government's commitment to support all efforts that promote and uphold the shining principles of freedom of expression and free media. He was addressing an event organized by Islamabad Journalist Safety Forum on the theme of the UN 10 years plan of action in Islamabad today. The Prime Minister termed a free media and freedom of expression the important pillars of a state and said here can be no democracy without freedom of expression. He pointed out that Pakistan became the first country in Asia to pass legislation on the safety of journalists at the federal and the provincial level in Sindh province. Shehbaz Sharif said the government will continue to support the ongoing efforts in Punjab, Khyber Pakhtunkhwa and Balochistan to legislate on safety of journalists. He further said the parliament passed a landmark protection of journalists and media professional acts after thorough consultations with all the stakeholders. He appreciated the contribution of international community in supporting economic and social development of Pakistan, particularly UNESCO and countries including Norway, Denmark and France. He expressed confidence that outcomes and recommendations of forum will hope and help leading towards a free media in Pakistan. Prime Minister Shehbaz Sharif has welcomed Supreme Court's sua moto notice regarding murder of journalist Arshad Sharif. In a tweet today he said the government will extend full cooperation to the court in this regard. The Prime Minister said he had already written a letter to Chief Justice of Pakistan for setting up a judicial commission to probe the murder. Minister for Planning and Development Hassan Iqbal says next general elections will be held on the basis of data compiled through seventh population and housing census in October next year. He was addressing the inaugural ceremony of training of master trainers for the seventh population and housing census in Islamabad today. As Iqbal said, the government has allocated 34 billion rupees which would be utilized in framing economic policies and ensure equitable distribution of resources among all stakeholders for census and development of the country. He said the government is also providing 13.5 billion rupees to national data and registration authority to arrange digital solutions for compiling the data. President Dr. Arif Alvi has reiterated Pakistan's firm resolve to successfully complete projects under CPAC which reflect high-quality socio-economic development of the country's remote areas. He said this during his visit to Chinese embassy today to extend his heartfelt condolences on behalf of government and people of Pakistan to Chinese leadership and people over the death of former Chinese President Jiang Zemin. And condoling with the Chinese ambassador Nong Rong, the president said that Yang Zemin was a remarkable leader, a visionary statesman who promoted global peace and stability at bilateral, regional and international levels. Dr. Arif Alvi said time-tested friendship between Pakistan and China is based on exceptional trust, understanding, strategic communication and wide-ranging practical cooperation. He expressed his gratitude on behalf of the government and people of Pakistan for the generous Chinese support 
during the COVID-19 pandemic and devastating floods in the country. This is Radio Pakistan. Pakistan has urged the international community and the United Nations to play their role in preserving Islamic heritage sites in India from the extremist Hindutva regime. In a statement, the Foreign Office said Indian government must ensure the safety, security and protection of minorities, particularly Muslims and their places of worship. Foreign Office said on completion of three decades marking the demolition of the historic Babri Mosque in India, in Indian Ayodhya city by Hindu zealots, the occasion is a sad reminder of the growing anti-Muslim frenzy in India ever since. The statement condemned the ongoing const construction of a Hindu temple on the site of demolished mosque and the acquittal of the criminals responsible for its destruction. At the United Nations, Pakistan has called for closing the digital divide to accelerate progress in poor countries and end racism. This was said by Pakistan's Deputy Permanent Representative to the United Nations, Amir Khan, while speaking during a UN-sponsored online discussion in Geneva. The Pakistani envoy said inability of the developing countries to reap benefits of digital transformation offered by extraordinary opportunities is amplifying the risk of further deepening of the already existing digital divide. Senior leader of the All-Party Suryat Conference, Meadwise Umar Farooq, while exposing the contradiction of the policy outlined by Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi in an article describing the G20 scenario under Indian presidency, has said the same can work wonders if adopted in dealing with the Kashmir dispute. Meanwhile, Umar Farooq, who continues to remain under house arrest in a statement in Sirinagar, making a reference to the outstanding Kashmir dispute, further said problems and disputes have to be resolved sooner or later and peaceful negotiations provide the best option. Meanwhile, National Conference President Farooq Abdullah has warned New Delhi and Indian armed forces against interfering in the future election process in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. Addressing a gathering in Sirinagar, he vowed to defeat the Indian forces who are harassing people across the occupied territory. He warned of agitation against the rigging, people's Democratic Party Chief Mehbooba Mufti speaking to reporters at Kazi Gand said the BJP government has failed to protect the Pandit community in Kashmir. On the other hand, a delegation of Kashmir Committee Jeddah called on the OIC Secretary General Hussain Brahim Taha in Jeddah and apprised him about the latest human rights situation in Indian illegally occupied Jammu and Kashmir. In Afghanistan, at least seven people were killed and six others injured in a roadside bomb blast in Balkh province today. According to police, the bomb placed in a cart by the roadside went off as a bus carrying employees of a petroleum company reached near the cart. China has dismissed a Pentagon report about the piece of pace of its nuclear weapons program as unfair gesticulation and speculation. In a statement, China's defense ministry said that the United States is absurdly guessing about the modernization of China's nuclear forces. Earlier, Pentagon, in a report last month, said that China would likely have a stockpile of 1,500 nuclear warheads by 2035 if it continues with its current pace of its nuclear buildup. In the pre-quarter final round of FIFA World Cup in Qatar, Morocco will take on Spain today at 8 p.m. Pakistan Standard Time. In the second match, in the second match, Portugal will play against Switzerland at 12 a.m. tonight. And finally, the weather. Mainly cold and dry weather is expected in most parts of the country during the next 12 hours. However, foggy conditions are likely to pre prevail in Punjab, Upper Sindh, and Khyber Pakhtunkhwa during night and morning hours. And that is the end of the news. For more news and analyses, log on to our website radio.gov.pk and also watch live streaming of our bulletins on the link facebook.com slash radio Pakistan News Official.